Welcome back to MathSpark. In this video, we're going to talk about active homeworking. Up to this point in the video series, we've been talking about how to use the My Math Test program to take diagnostic tests, to practice on key prerequisite areas, and to show mastery of certain topics. But now I want to talk about the other component that's going to be an important part of doing your work over the summer, the pencil and paper computations you do on the side. It turns out there are ways to do your paper and pencil homework that can help you to develop further mastery and understanding of the skills. This goes back to a well-known adage in mathematics, which comes from the famous Hungarian problem book. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. Unfortunately, just doing mathematics isn't enough to really learn mathematics. Homework is the means by which we practice the mechanical techniques of mathematics. But if you were anything like me, your high school homework probably looked something like this. Giant problem sets, compressed as to as small a space as I possibly could muster, turned in on a day-to-day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day -to -day basis, section by section, chapter by chapter, test by test. Unfortunately, when you get into college mathematics, homework isn't going to be nearly as complete, turned in nearly as frequently, or worth nearly as much in the final grading scheme. So if you've been in the habit of doing the bare minimum amount of work to get things done, then you're not doing enough to prepare yourself for college. Homework needs to be an active thinking process as you get to more and more complicated mathematics, more and more complicated engineering, more and more complicated science. So how do we do that? The key is to focus on what homework is. Homework is the means by which we practice the mechanical techniques of mathematics, but it's also how we examine and present our thought process to our peers. And so if you keep this sentence in mind, then you can make homework an active learning process. So what were some of the ways that my three examples up on the board fail this idea? Well, let's take a look at them briefly. The first example, well, this work is messy crumpled. Sloppy work often indicates sloppy thought, and it's a poor presentation of your work. Take pride in the work that you're going to do. This sort of violates our presentation of the thought process idea. What about the second example? Here the work is clean and well organized, but it's largely incomplete. It only shows the questions and the answers without any of the work in there. There's no examination of how the problem was done and no presentation of that thought process. You should always include enough steps in the work so that your peers in class could follow what it is you've done. For the third example, the work is well organized, the steps are clearly shown. What's the problem here? Well, this might sound a little nitpicky, but the problem is that spiral notebook. It's going to make it difficult to remove or rearrange your work cleanly. Not only does that affect the final presentation of your homework, but in many college courses, homework submitted with a ripped spiral edge won't be accepted by a college professor. It will also be effective to be able to remove or rearrange homework when you need to talk to a professor during an office hour or to compare and contrast notes between different courses. As a result, for college math courses, use a three-ring binder with loose-leaf notebook paper or a program like Journal or OneNote to do your work. And future videos will actually talk about those two programs, which will be part of the tablet PC that you'll have as a student at the School of Mines. So these are all examples of what not to do. What should we focus on? That statement in blue. Homework is the means by which we practice the mechanical techniques of mathematics as well as examine and present our thought process to our peers. And based off of our quote-unquote bad examples, what are some of the things we should keep in mind about our homework? First off, in college, math homework or in fact any of, of your other homework isn't about getting the right answer as quickly as possible. It's about communicating your thought process to the instructor, the grader, your peers. As a result, always do your math work as if explaining the results to a peer in your classroom. At the very minimum, that means show your work. Be organized in your work and your presentation, even if that means you have to rewrite a problem. Care in how you present your work often translates to care in how you think about your work. Finally, Avoid spiral notebooks and do your homework in a binder or some similar modular system for ease of access and rearrangement. I promise it'll help out in college a little bit later on. So this might represent a paradigm shift in how you think about homework. It's not just collecting points anymore, but a means for you to understand and present your work to other people. But all of this work doesn't tell me 
how to go and do my homework, just maybe how I'm supposed to be presenting it in its final version. To focus on how we might solve our homework, I'm going to defer to mathematician George Poya, who wrote a famous book called How to Solve It, in which he outlined a four-step process for solving mathematical problems. And those four steps were to understand the problem, devise a plan, carry out the plan, and look back. So let me take a look at each one of these steps in a little bit more detail. The first step is to understand the problem. At a bare minimum, that means writing out the problem and understand what's being asked. What are the definitions of the terms being used? What are the unknowns and the knowns? What kind of units should the final answer have? Those sorts of questions. Once you understand what's being asked, the next step is to devise a plan. By recognizing common features of the problem, including the terms, the structure, the objects, formulate what steps you could take in order to get closer and closer to finding out what was being asked. Once you've devised your plan, the next step is to carry out the plan. That's where really all of the math is happening. Do the mathematics in the step-by-step -step process, indicating what parts of the plan they relate to, until you get a final answer. But getting a final answer isn't the end of the process. The last step is to look back at what you've done. Check your answer if you can. If you can't get a complete check of your answer, perhaps you can check its reasonableness, or maybe you can re-examine the plan you used to find it. This is the part that makes the homework an active learning process. You're never done by boxing the answer. You should always spend some time thinking about what that answer is and how you got it. Poya's four-step process is a powerful way of solving mathematics, science, and engineering problems. So to summarize, we've addressed two main topics in this video. What homework is and how we might go around doing it. Homework is the means by which we practice the mechanical techniques of mathematics, as well as examine and present our thought process to our peers. And when it comes to doing the work, we use the four-step process of understanding the problem, devising a plan, carrying out that plan, and then looking back on the results. Of course, like anything in mathematics, theory is one thing, practice is something else. So let's take a look at how we might apply this four-step process and new paradigm for mathematics to some standard problems that came from the trigonometry diagnostic exam. So what I'd ask you to do is to copy these problems down and attempt to solve them. And then you can take a look at the next three videos in which I will go through and solve these problems applying the Poya method and the idea of a final presentation for our mathematics. So good luck and I'll see you soon.